Hey everyone, it's Metal Freak here, and I just watched the first eight episodes of Resident Alien Season 2. Before I start, I just want to say that I was wrong about this season having 20 episodes, because it actually has 16. So there is a three episode difference, but that's not that big of a deal. Just three less episodes I have to watch. But Season 2, so far, has been an absolute blast. It is a lot more funnier, but even a lot more thrilling. Um, we are getting more into the government trying to relocate uh, um, Harry, well, the aliens, you know, person, and bring it back for research. We have the two... Uh, people that are kind of like in secret uh, trying to locate him. Uh, we do get one of them getting unalived and I was cheering for it because it was the one that I absolutely couldn't stand and I was absolutely happy with it and I loved it. Also, Nathan Fillion is in this season. I didn't even realize it. Uh, he might have even been in season one because he was the voice of the octopus that later we find out is named 42 because of the restaurant he was going to be eating at. Um, Nathan Fillion voiced him. And I think that's cool since Alan Tudyk and Nathan Fillion were on uh, Firefly together. And of course, Alan Tudyk dies in Firefly. But this time... Nathan Fillion dies in Resident Alien, 42 passes away after getting mauled on by a dog in a scene that I feel like was meant to be sad. We see Alan Tudyk's character cry, but I couldn't help but just laugh at the weird and obscureness of the episode and that entire scene, but it was absolutely weird and I loved it. Also, this season has me feeling bad about the things I said about Ben Cotton's character. And I actually kind of sympathize for him in this season, which is weird, because I really didn't like his character. But somehow I kind of felt bad about the things I've said, and I don't know, I, I felt bad about it. There's also a very interesting uh, subplot where uh, Harry tries a specific... Um, substance that gets him all weirded out by the experience he is experiencing and it leads to a very hilarious scene where paintings are coming to life and scaring Alan Tudyk's character to death. It is hilarious and weird and I loved it. So that was that. In one of the episodes that I really loved which was called uh, Family Day Harry gets to see his daughter, uh, named Liza, who, at first, she was snobby and, you know, that rebellious teen persona, but as the episode carried on, we started to see this wonderful side of the character where we could tell that she just wanted a father figure after years of feeling like she was disowned, and Harry realizing I liked that. I liked having this feeling of bonding with someone that is essentially a child of mine. So therefore, I want to experience that. And he treats her with the utmost respect and like a father-daughter thing. Sure, they have their weird fight. Um, but like towards the end, you can really tell that he is just, he loves her. And it is such a heartwarming scene. Uh, where they finally say their goodbyes as she's going back to uh, see her mom. and It's just a really, really good scene and shows the more human side of Harry, which is weird because he's not human, but we see a more uh, empathetic side of him, and it really shows that he is still a redeemable character, even though his whole point in being in the show is that he's meant to... Erase the human race. <laughs> um, you see that he does have feelings for uh, the people around him. And he can adapt 
uh, positively. He just he's just afraid of adapting because that means he has become human and he knows that the moment he becomes human, he can't go back to his home planet and he just wants to go back to his home planet. He is planet sick technically. Um, he wants to save the human race. But he wants to see his family, so it's like this weird duality, but it causes for great characters. And I absolutely, I, I love that. I love that for Harry. There's also uh, a scene in the uh, last episode that I've seen so far, episode 8, uh, where Harry has an egg of an alien and it hatches and they, Harry and Asta, uh, have to go look for this alien baby who is just wreaking havoc outside, killed a raccoon, and is very, very uh, fast-paced and all this stuff. And also, we have discovered that the real Harry van der Spiegel mm, was working with some uh, notorious people who were trying to... Uh, Sam Hodges, the original Doctor. So, we are now seeing the choice people looking for Harry Vanderspiegel because of a contract, a deal, whereas the government's looking for this P person because he's an alien. So, we got two different types of bad people, and we have the good guys in the middle trying to figure out what we're going to do to get the ship back uh, up and running ever since he crash landed to bring. Uh, that dude, I can't remember his name, Max, uh, back to Earth after being flown up into space. And, uh, yeah, it's, it, there's a lot that happened. And I am rambling on because I wanted to get through all the moments that I wanted to talk about uh, and also explain what the point of this season is so far. And I can't because I only have ten minutes, so I'm rushing through everything and I feel like I'm leaving so much out. However... I'm going to stop it here because I have eight more episodes to watch before I give away my top three episodes as well as be done with this series and go on to Always Sunny, The Office, Smallville, The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and see what else I have left. So, that's what it's going to be for now. We are going to be a to-be-continued uh, part for this. This is part one, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm just... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to talk fast just so I can get this part out of the way now because it is 3.45 a.m. And I have been up all day messing around with stuff. I have been trying to get my DVD copy. You can't see, but I got a DVD copy of the season two. And I've been trying to get that to work on the TV, and the TV was messing up so I could watch it until way later. Um, so there was that. Then I also had to go to the store. Then I was setting up with a car thing and a bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff. So it is three three in the morning, and I just now finished my part one video. So I am tired. I want to go to bed, but you could probably think I'm very hyper based on how fast I'm talking and how active I am. But I am really fucking tired. So I'm gonna go hit the hay. Have a great day, and I will see you in part two. Stay with my dudes. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Metal Freak here, and I finished the show today. Excuse me if I feel sick or I look sick. Um, I'm kind of trying to get through a sort of weird sickness I've been having. It's been really hot where I am lately. Like, it's getting to the hundreds fast. So, um, I'm kind of dealing with that by staying in a place that's really cold. Plus, stress has been getting to me lately with a whole bunch of stuff. And I have not really been doing well, like, kind of, guess, mentally, I feel like. Uh, I've been getting stressed out a lot, and uh, also been uh, having some sad times. So, there's kind of been some ups and downs. Um, but, luckily, I'm feeling better. Last night was fucking horrible. <laughs> I was supposed to finish this show last night, but I got so sick... I nearly passed out from, like, dizzy spells. It was a weird time, but luckily I'm not, like, bad anymore, and I am wasting so much time 
talking about sickness that I haven't even introduced what show I just finished. I just watched the second season of Resident Alien Season 2. Believe me when I tell you that this season took me by surprise. I watched the first eight episodes of this season and I absolutely enjoyed it. However, there were episodes that I didn't really care for, but nothing too bad. And then this uh, last uh, eight episodes really caught me off guard because I really enjoyed this season. It was more funnier, a little bit sad, and one of my favorite things about this show kind of took a turn. Um, because Harry's been the main character, but now Harry kind of feels like a side character because you're getting so much more story out of the side characters. Like, you get stuff with Asta, you get stuff with uh, Max, you get stuff with Darcy, you get stuff with Ben and Kay, you get stuff with Olivia and Mike, you get Dan. You get all these side characters that you get a story out of that we kind of had just shoved in the background for most of it. And it's really good that these characters are now shining and it gives a chance for Harry to kind of just become kind of like the background and stuff that he does is like, okay, that's cool. The main story's still happening, but we're seeing more of the side characters. And I really like how we're getting them, uh, the side characters a little bit more attention because it gives them depth. It gives them this kind of uh, cause to um, kind of do something instead of just being in the background to like make it look alive. Like, now, we have character depth. We have character arcs. It's really good. Um, we also get uh, a whole weird thing with Sahar where she feels like she's the mother of this uh, alien baby, which is a weird scene, but it's somehow heartwarming um, for Harry to realize that there are humans that don't see aliens as a bad thing but see them as visitors who just want to have a connection with other species that are alive. Um, and it kind of gives Harry this chance to see that there isn't just one person that likes human beings. There's, um, well, aliens. There's a bunch of humans that really respect other species. And it's interesting to see Harry finally understand that humans are good and humans are worth saving. Also, one of the things I like about the show that I haven't really got to talk about is Alan Tudyk's acting. Holy shit, Alan Tudyk is a genius with this show. I don't know if I ever said it about him uh, on the show, but his acting style with like his voice is pretty fucking genius, especially when you realize who he is in this show. He's an alien that's taken the form of a human being, and the alien has learned how to live in a human, but he hasn't fully mastered the voice. So he talks with the... He talks with this kind of, like, half-assed voice, because he's mastered everything else in the body, but he hasn't really gotten the voice down. So it's hard for him to blend in, because he knows the words, but he doesn't know how to say them in a sentence together. So he says each word as if it's its own entity. So you could say, the cat in the hat, and he'll say, the cat in the hat. He says each word on its own, because he hasn't really fully mastered the speech. He understands words, and he knows how to put them into a phrase, but he doesn't know how to say the phrase. He just says each word as if it's one word, if you understand what I mean. Um, if you listen to his voice, you'll see that he's speaking as if he knows what he's saying, but he doesn't know how to place the words in his voice to, like, m make it a sentence, if you know what I mean. Just listen to his voice, and then listen to him speaking, like, like in interviews, and you'll see that Alan Tudyk did such an interesting job, and it kind of reminds me of, I don't know if you ever watched it, but it's an alien film called Starman. Really good movie. Um, but anyways, I think it's Kurt Russell plays an alien who takes the form of the main uh, the main character's husband, and he speaks with this almost dead, sort of like half-assed voice because he's an alien who hasn't fully mastered the human speech, 
And I feel like uh, Alan Tudyk may have watched uh, Starman to kind of get into the character because it's almost the same type of thing happening where you have a character who understands human speech but doesn't know how to speak like a human. So he says each word as if the word is its own thing. And I think that's just such a cool concept to throw into a, a show like this. I don't know if I ever said it yet, but Jesus Christ, I love Alan Tudyk so much. Great fucking actor. He was the best person for this role. I am sorry, but us Texans know how to do shit. Also, speaking also on uh, Alan Tudyk's behalf, we've only seen Harry uh, the alien cry twice, and they were both in this season. We see Harry cry once when he realizes that he's been a bad friend to Asta and feels truly bad about it for, like, lying to her and uh, erasing some of her memory uh, because he saw that she was sad and was like, hey, you, you're sad. Sad is a bad feeling. I will make you not feel sad anymore. I will erase the memory that you have that's making you sad. And he ends up, like, making her day horrible because she forgets something that she wasn't supposed to forget. And it kind of ruins the relationship, sort of. And he realizes that it's actually good to feel pain because it's uh, a, a learning state, you know? It's a, it's a way of learning. You know, you handle your uh, life lessons by grief and by sadness and by pain. And so Harry feels bad because he did that to Asta. And he feels like he's a bad friend because of it. And then we see him cry a second time when he sends his alien child away because he decides he wants to save the world. And if he fails, he doesn't want his child to die as well. So he decides to leave his, uh, let his child go up into space, back to the planet. And he stays on Earth to save the world, which is such a good character arc for Harry. But he cries a second time for that. Well, he cries that time, the second time. Because he misses his child already, and he understands the human connection of a father and child. Much like a mother and child. And we see that Harry's becoming more human, yet he doesn't want to admit it, but he understands it's gonna happen, this is his fate, so we better stick with it. I fucking love this show. I loved this season. There were episodes I didn't like, but there were episodes I also really loved. So the episodes that I loved hit all the check marks hit all the bases. And the episodes I didn't really care for were alright because I can deal with a couple bad episodes if there's more good episodes than bad. And there were only six out of eight, uh, 16. So, 10 good episodes, six terrible ones, not that out of a run. Plus, season one was all bangers. So, good show. Good show. 